Today on Judge Faith. Which one of these golden girls is forgetting the golden rule? I've never known so many nasty people in all my life and they go to the same church. I do not go to Miss Thomas Church. I don't care where you go, you need I to go somewhere. Go. We have it established, we all need to go to church. Now let's move on to the next subject. <laughs> And later, this kind of car financing gets bumpy. This is the worst type of deal you could ever do, yeah. is to try to sell a car like this. I think that's what he, why we're here, because he's upset no, about no, his you're credit. No, here, no, you're here because there was an agreement that you would make monthly payments mm -hmm. on a car, and you stopped making the payments. So the question is, why? Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor, and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now, she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real, and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Carolyn Holland is responsible for removing the contents of her late sister-in-law's apartment, but says the landlord won't give her access to the unit. She is suing for the value of the items in the apartment. Defendant Freddie Roper says she gave the plaintiff plenty of access and time to get the contents out. She is countersuing for unpaid rent. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, we have Holland versus Roper. Thank you, Barbara. Carolyn Holland? Yes. You were suing the defendant, Freddie Roper, for $5,000? Correct. For the value of your, is it your late sister-in-law? Yes. Your late sister-in-law's goods, and you are countersuing, ma'am, for rent and related fees and pain and suffering, $4,928? Yes. Okay. That's so, as I understand, Ms. Holland, your sister-in-law, your late sister-in-law... Correct. ...was a tenant in your building, ma'am? Yes. Unfortunately. And and she lived there for for 40 years? Over 40 years. Over 40 years? She was there before this lady bought the apartment. But it was the last 10 years that you owned the building? Yes. And, and so Miss Thomas passed away recently? She died July the 21st. My condolences. How old was she? She was 88. And so after she died, you were put in charge of the estate? I had the power of attorney, plus she made a will. Was she living by herself? Yes. Okay, so she went into the nursing home because she needed someone to be around her during yes, that time? Yes, because she kept falling. Okay. And she would call me 11.30 at night to come and help her because she would be on the floor. Mm. And she did not want to go to a nursing home. She said, if you take me to the nursing home, I'm going to die. Mm. So five days after she went into the nursing home, she died. Mm. Wow. So, Miss Thomas was your tenant. Yes. And you, she was a good tenant. Yes. Always paid her rent. Always. No issues with her, right? No. So, here we are. Miss um, Thomas unfortunately passes away in, Ju in July. Did you attend the funeral? Yes, I did. And, and so, what was the agreement between the two of you about how Mrs. Thomas's property would be removed from her apartment? Because that's the real issue. You say they didn't move it out in a timely no, manner. No, I, I uh, went over to Miss Thomas' apartment, and she and uh, Miss Holland was there sitting down. So I asked her, uh, "Could you get the, uh, pro this, you know, the belongings out?" Uh, in uh, August of fifth. No, because she never gave me that. Ms. She Thomas? never set a date. So on August 16th, you changed the locks to yes. what exactly? The main door. And Miss Thomas's. And Miss Thomas front and back, and the back door, main back. Okay. Door. And during this time, though, do you know that she's coming in trying to move Miss Thomas's things she out? She wasn't trying to do. Yes, she, she wasn't was. doing nothing. Okay. Yes, tell me I what's was going coming on. In. No. I have dates, putting down the dates that I would come in, and what I was doing was trying to clean that apartment out. I was doing it on my own. What she's mad about, she didn't get any of the clothes. Because Miss Thomas was a very sharp dressing lady, and she wore very expensive clothes and very expensive shoes and pocketbook. She came over to check them out one day because she wore the same size shoe as Miss Thomas wore. So I think what she's mad about, she didn't get any of them, you know, because she wore real nice things, real nice Did things. Did she say anything? 
Who? Yeah, she made a comment. She said, oh, she really wore some dang shoes. I said, yeah, she did. She paid for them. Yeah, I because know she, she was a dresser. She, she was have, a dresser. No, she didn't have any children. She was a dresser. And she bought very expensive things. So Don't, you were moving things little by little on your own. I was moving as much as I could because all I had was an SUV. You and weren't I could moving not, nothing. Uh, you, you don't know move, what I had. You didn't move nothing. I moved everything you, she you had in there. You just mad. You in there. Okay, ladies. You don't know. You don't know what she had. I Ms. was Holland. Moving. Yes. Talk to me. Okay. I'm the decision maker here. She you don't have to convince she her of anything. Miss, okay. I was moving. Did she have a conversation with you before she changed the locks? No. How did you find out the locks had been changed? Well, I went over there to get the furniture. You say you gave her until August the fifth. August the fifth, and that's that's not a lot of time. And I understand you want to re-lease the place and get somebody else in there, but that's not a lot of time for someone to move things out when someone has lived in an apartment for over forty years and accumulated. Where are the things? Where are the the things now? So you're suing for the value of the items left I'm in the apartment. I'm suing for the things she took. Where are those items now, ma'am? Still in the building. They're still in they the apartment. They're still in the apartment. But they I got pictures. Been gone. Let me see the photos. That's her. That, that's her bedroom set. Still there. I took the dishes down, and I was gonna pack them. Well, so I don't understand. So the, this apartment has not been leased again. All of this stuff has been in there. Yes. Why not just let them come in and get the stuff out? I had a lawyer to come and ask her, when can Miss Holland come in? And get the and get the rest of the stuff. And what was your response to that? She hung up on it. I didn't. I didn't talk to no yes, lawyer. Yes, you did. You hung up on it. I didn't talk to no lawyer. Miss Thomas was not cremated. She's not cremated yet, because of the fact that uh, they came in, they went into her account and took monies. Who did? Uh, we don't know. I have to take okay. care of that when I go back to St. Louis. Okay. But she didn't do anything but complain. How is it helping you? to lock all of those items in the apartment for months on end when they're calling you trying to get, get in they there to get the things to out. Me, uh, no yeah. one's ever called you once no. to try to get those things. Yes, I called her. Okay, Ms. Roper, did you have a conversation with any of Ms. Thomas's relatives about her property she after you changed the lock? She called me after she had broke in. Uh, Do I look like I can break uh, through August, a door? Uh, <laughs> uh, August the 16th. <laughs> I did not go in and broke the door. Break the door. <laughs> and then we went in. <laughs> yeah, oh, you had broke the. You had broke the door. Why I would can't. I have to break the door because when I got a key? You, you didn't have a quit key. Line. You ought to quit lying <laughs> yourself. You quit lying. You're trying to make a right. thing okay. Quit okay. You so just made it because you didn't get nothing. Miss Holland. I don't want nothing. Yes, you did. Yes, no, you I did. Didn't. Yeah, you did. You tried to bribe me to I'm get stuff. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? <laughs> what would I bribe you oh, for? Okay, yeah. here's where we are. Here's where we are. <laughs> You're a joke. Here's where you we are. You're a joke. Coming up on Judge Faith. Which one of these two ladies is telling the truth? I do not go to Miss Thomas. I don't care where you go. You need to go somewhere. And you need to go somewhere. And later, this kind of car financing gets bumpy. Because I see these cases all the time. This is yeah. the worst type of deal you could ever do yes. is to try to sell a car like this to someone you barely know. Plaintiff Carolyn Holland is suing for the value of the item she's not allowed to retrieve from a rental property. Defendant Freddie Roper says she has the right to lock her rental unit and deny access. When someone dies and they live in an apartment and they're in the middle of a month-to-month -month lease, which is still a lease, mm -hmm. the responsibility is now turned over to the executor of that estate, which is you, right? Correct. And you submitted proof to the court and I've reviewed that proof. And what you have to do, ma'am, as a landlord, you treat the executor of the estate as if she is now the tenant in that unit. Three weeks go by and you change the locks and lock their family out from getting her property. What I'm telling you, Ms. Roper, is that is an illegal lockout. Before you lock them out, you have to get a court order to do so. Did you get a court order? No, she no. didn't. Okay, so that was an illegal lockout, ma'am. This is the black and white letter of the law She's in been your nasty state. nasty through the whole okay? thing. I've never known so many nasty people in all my life and they go to the same church. <laughs> I don't go to you. I don't go to Ms. 
Miss uh, Thomas Church. Will you? They say I do not that. go to Miss Thomas Church. I don't Church. care where you go. You need I to go somewhere. I do not somewhere. go. And you, you need, need to go, go somewhere. Boy, if Miss Thomas yeah. was alive, okay, we, she okay, would we get have you it established. Yeah. We well, have it established. We all Thomas. need to go to church. Now let's move on to the next subject, <laughs> which is, which is, what are we going to do now about this property? Because you have a couple of choices here. Do you want to go? and get the property out of the unit, or would you prefer the value of the property? And uh, how are you going to prove value to me? Uh, the, some of the stuff is old anyway. I want to get the stove and the refrigerator that she wanted, uh -uh. and she had no, them all piled up. I want up. you to get everything out of there. Uh, Ms. Roper, let me, let me explain something to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to decide what's going to happen here, okay. okay? Because you've already broken the law in your state. So this is not about what you want right now. It's about what I decide. She's been nasty through the whole thing. This is what I've been dealing with. Miss Holland, don't talk to each other again. Okay. Just don't. I don't need to talk to <laughs> Okay, so here's what we're going to do. On your counterclaim for $4,928, you're suing for rent, door repair, the locks that were changed, and pain and suffering. Your counterclaim is dismissed because you performed an illegal lockout. You couldn't do that. You should have gone to court, and you didn't. Okay. What I'm going to do is order the defendant to pay you punitive damages for the illegal lockout in the amount of $2,000. Okay. So you can have that money and use it to go and move out your sister-in-law's things by okay. November 1st. Okay. You understand? Yes. Ms. Roper, do you understand? Yes. She is to be allowed back in with her movers, and I want you to contact my staff by the deadline and let me know that that has happened, that it has taken place. Okay. Judgment in this case for the plaintiff, $2,000 in punitive damages. Thank you. Plaintiff Louis Ornelas is suing his family friend for money owed on a car sale. Defendant Cindy Casimero says she and the plaintiff made a deal that freed her from any more payments on the car. Louis Ornelas? Yes, ma'am. You are suing the defendant Cindy Casimero uh -huh. for $8,503, the remaining balance due on a car loan? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and as I understand it, this is some type of convoluted car sale the two of you engaged in. Correct. You owned a car. Yes. And you didn't outright sell the car to her, but she took possession of it and she was making payments. Correct. And when the car was to be paid off, whenever that was, you would then transfer the title to her? Yes. Okay, so just take me back to the beginning and tell me how this all started. How did you know the defendant? A uh, family friend. And what happened is she bought the vehicle in October of 2012. What kind of car is it? It was a Scion TC. What year? 2009. Okay. She what was the agreement? That she would keep making payments under the loan that was under my name and my parents. Mm -hmm. And once the vehicle was completely paid off, the title would be transferred to her name. And how well do you know her? Um, barely knew her. Okay, so you, you're tying yourself to someone to make and relying on them to make car payments for you in your name for four years. Correct, yes. Okay. Why did you need to do that? Because that, to me, that's a pretty desperate move yes. that someone so makes. Yes, so I bought the vehicle in 2009, had just graduated high school and I was gonna go to college. So I decided to buy a brand new vehicle, not the best decision. And then it got financially difficult going full-time to school and full-time work. I admire your decision to go and pursue your education, but why not get someone to just buy your car outright instead of relying on someone to make payments for four years? Someone that you don't even know. Yes, yeah, correct. That's you know why I'm asking this? Because I see these cases all mm -hmm. the time. This is yeah. the worst type of deal you could ever do yes. is to try to sell a car like this to someone you barely know because what inevitably happens is exactly what happened in this case. Mm -hmm. They have a car accident. They rack up tickets, something else happens with the car. You are still the owner of the car. It's yes. still in your name. Mm -hmm. So if something happens, they're coming after you. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have this agreement in writing? Yes, I okay, do. Okay, may I see it, please? So for one year, you were making payments directly mm -hmm. to, the, to the bank? Well, it was prior to that that there was four payments that were behind um, of $400 each. The car was in an accident. Mm -hmm. Who was driving the car? Me. Okay, so the car is in a collision center. Mm -hmm. You try to get the car out. 
they would not. And you're saying they wouldn't let you get the car out because you are not the Correct. registered owner mm -hmm. of the car. His parents, what his parents did is they said, we need money to get the car out. So we're like, okay, how much money do you need? And they, well, at first... No. Um, step up, ma'am. Hi. Hi. Are you uh, the defendant's mother? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm trying to figure out why you stopped making payments and why it's his responsibility Because now. the financial company said that we could not, no longer do that. What do you have to say about that? Uh, well, yes, we were trying to uh, make, keep doing the payments, but when, when she was trying to call the, the dealer, they, they didn't let they didn't let her. They do wouldn't the release any information to us, pretty much, because we weren't a registered owner or our name okay. was not in any. Okay, you tell me what happened. So I've never even heard any of this. Mm -hmm. I haven't either because it's not in your answer. Yeah. Go ahead. What actually happened is I heard about the vehicle, the accident that was involved the vehicle a week after from my parents, and what they told me is that the accident happened, that someone hit her, and they left, and she wasn't able to get any information on who hit her or what happened. And I actually have the police report from the sheriff stating that there's no evidence of another person being involved. Three months later, I get a phone call from the car dealer saying the car is about to get repoed because there's been no payments made. Mm -hmm. And she had not told me anything about this. She said she was taking care of everything. The way that I'm seeing it is if, regardless of if we would have taken over the payments or not, the car would have been repoed two years ago. His credit would have been What's ruined. What's your point? Well, that's what, I think that's what he, why we're here, because he's upset no, about no, his credit. No, no, here, you're here because there was an agreement that you would make monthly payments mm -hmm. on a car and you stopped making the payments. Mm -hmm. So the question is, why? The question is, are you justified in your stopping of making the payments on the car? The and so would not the work. answer to that is, so far, no. Just because you have an accident in the car and you can't drive it anymore, you're still obligated under this agreement. Do you understand? Yes. When we, go, when we, when we tried to do... Coming up, the blue book of the law gets thrown by the judge. You act like you're giving them $1,000 as a favor. You wrecked the car and in the collision center because of you. Plaintiff Lewis Arnalis made a deal to do a speedy car sale, but the defendant isn't keeping up her end of the deal. He is suing for the balance due on a car sale. Defendant Cindy Casimero says she fulfilled her obligation to the plaintiff and owes nothing. She is joined in court today by her mother, Lorena. The officer essentially did not credit your story. What photos did you submit to court? Let me see the photos. The front, you can see how the wheel is inverted. It's not turned. The wheel is not turned at all. It's the actual wheel is going into the vehicle. According to you, the dealer never told the defendant that she would not be allowed to make additional payments on exactly, the car. Exactly, yes. Okay. So that's when his mom got in contact with my parents. And by this point, I said, hey, if we give them the money to get the car out, we don't want to hear anything about it. And his mom agreed to it. His mom and my mom actually got got together. What do you mean you don't want to hear anything about true. it? You have well, a contract. His mom agreed to it. His mom agreed to it. His There's mom no to agreement. Car. There's agreed nothing to, signed. If we, if we paid money to get the car out of the collision center, that she would deal with the car afterwards. Okay, do you have that in writing? No, but we have the writing. We have the, the proof of the of the money that we took out in order to give them. To give them $1,000. Yes. So no you receipt. should have paid the entire 2500 you act like you're giving them $1,000 as a favor. You wrecked the car, and it's, a, it, it's in the collision center because of you. You should pay every penny to get the car out. <laughs> what do you have to say, ma'am? His, his mom and his dad was telling me that they, they need all that money for uh, get the car out. But if you're going to take this money, I don't want to hear anything else from this car now. How much did you give? It was 2000 and now, Judge Faith rules. How much did you contribute to get the car out of the collision center? Uh, $1,500, because they gave us 1000 So the question is whether or not this other $1,000 was paid okay. by you. Yes, it was. And you have no real proof of that? No, I don't. This is what someone stops making payments. Correct. You cannot tie yourself to someone you don't know for four years. This contract is terminated, but I am ordering the defendants to pay you $3,600 in damages. <laughs> Judge before the payment. Thank you. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.